Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So since I am flying home, I am pre-recording this video in order to have content while I'm away. And I thought that today we could do something a little bit different than what we usually do here on the channel. And what we'll do is look at some builds that I've done in the past a few years ago and just to take a look at what they looked like and maybe try to see some progression. And I think it's cool to look back and see what we've done. And don't forget to follow me on the socials if you want to keep updated while I'm away at home. Feel free to do so. My handle both on Twitter and on Instagram are Wistofu. And all of the builds that I'm going to be showing you here today, they are up on the gallery and my ID is Cats Against Crime. So let's get into it. So the first build that we will be looking at is this one titled Volcanic Poles Microhome. And I remember this was for a build challenge by Miss Griffey. And the challenge was to build a microhome. But as extra as I am, I didn't just want to build a microhome. I wanted to do something else. And so this is what we ended up doing. And my idea for this was an old volcano that, or a sleeping volcano that over time has been transformed into these natural pools with rain and stuff like that. And someone then decided to embrace the nature and then build a tiny home on top of the volcano. We have some waterfalls there as well. So it's very, it's kind of out there, but I was really proud of this build and I think I still am. Okay, and let's check the actual tiny home. Once we go up all this way, we have to the right a grill and a table. We have the trash can and some planters. And then through the door, we get to the house. And keep in mind, this is a micro home. So to the right, we have a little kitchen right here, be functional. Next to it, we have a dining table or a dining area with a skylight and this amazing view of the lakes or natural pools. Then left of the entrance, we have the bridge and a computer. And then beyond this divider, we have a Murphy bed with a bookshelf. And we also have this TV combo thing. And of course you have this amazing view as well. And then through this door, you have the bathroom. So it's a four by four, but it's functional. And I used a lot of tiny living here. I, th I think this challenge was made around the time when tiny living came out, which makes sense. But yeah, let's just take a look at the rest of it. So we have some bikes here, have some planters here. I made this fire pit area. Looking at it now, would have put some chairs there, but I think it looks cool still. Over here, we can do laundry. We have some bee houses. We have a well here, and this is the view from another angle. We even have an easel here. I've, I reckon this is a really cool spot to get paint. And lastly, we have here a tent. I think my idea was the person living here could also sleep on a tent and be one with nature. And I've added some chairs and a, a guitar so you can relax in the evening around the fire. And this was one of the first times that I used the tool mod to do this. And to give this illusion that this is a two-story house, I placed these uh, windows as if they were walls, but it, this doesn't actually count as a room. So it is a micro home because this is the only livable space. So it has um, 32 tiles in total. But yeah, this is it for the volcanic pools, tiny micro house. I quite like it. Next up, we have the Erdad, which is I guess you could call it a wedding venue and this was for the spark challenge or one of the spark challenges that the sims team did and this is another 64 by 64 it's more than just a wedding venue so let's take a look at it this is her in all her glory so as you can see it's lagging a little bit because it's so big and both this one and the previous one the volcanic pools one they took me so long to finish because i would build a little bit every day but it's really really good to finish a project like this so we have a labyrinth here we have some fountains we have a big lake so this was a way for me to do something cool without having to use the terrain tool and i think it ended up looking cute but yeah, as i said it's more than just a wedding venue so let's check it out we go in through these doors and we have these two staircases on both sides but let's check out the inside first we have this double height ceiling entrance through these i think we just have yeah just some wine bottles then as we walk in we have this very grand and luxurious entrance with a lot of red and a lot of statues and why don't we start on the right we have already two bathrooms so they're quite simple still with that classical look then we have the toilets and then back outside over here we have another one and it follows the same pattern 
Now back outside again, here to the left, I made a little play date area for the kids and toddlers so adults can just hang out and you'll see that there's plenty to do for the adults. But yeah, there's a lot of activities for the kids and this is also the kids and toddlers bathroom. So I made sure to put toddler potties and regular toilets. But yeah, it's really interesting to visit or revisit a build that I did four years ago already. Then over here we have a guest room if I'm not mistaken and it's very classical, it's very kind of vintage too. But my thought was maybe someone that's traveling from afar could stay over here. And then we have an ensuite, so it's quite simple. And back into the hall again. And this, I think, is the honeymoon suite. Exactly. So I made it more high end, at least that's the feeling that I was going for with the built in and the petals. It's, it's not my personal style, but it's what I was kind of going for. And through this archway, we have the bathroom. So you have some more rose petals and candles to make it more romantic. And there's even a shower. All right, back into the hall again. We have a lot of bookshelves on the other side of the build. This door leads to the back area. And let's take a look at what we have over on this side. Down this hallway, which is left of the entrance, we have a restaurant. And this is the entrance of the restaurant. To the left, we have a kitchen. I made sure to clutter it up as well. So you could have everything you would need to throw the best wedding ever. We have the menu here and beyond this wall we have the actual restaurant. So we have a bunch of tables, we have this cool view of the lake. Some more tables here, we even have the statues and waterfalls there. Then we even have up the stairs the continuation of the restaurant. We have this cool area where you can maybe give a toast from here. We have some more tables, some aquariums to separate the spaces. And this is a really big table so you can throw the wedding here. Or this is where you can have the wedding dinner. Alright, back into the entrance again. We can go up these stairs. It's still lagging so much. Yeah, over here we have the entrance so we can see who's arriving. Over on this side, I think this is just another simple bathroom. Follows the same patterns as the other ones. And then I decided to make a little library here because you never know when you're going to need computers and maybe books. So yeah, just a peaceful spot amongst all the chaos. And, and through this door, we have a nightclub. So this is what it looks like. To the right, we have like a lounge area. So you have the bar, you have some couches so you can sit and relax, talk and flirt. And then over here, you have the actual dance floor. So a lot of space, some neon lights, and you have another extra bar over here so you can order drinks. And yeah, I really like the way it came out. There's a door here, which leads to this part outside. So you can catch some air and look at the lights at night. And we have an extra door here, which I think would, would be more for the staff, but this connects to the restaurant and it also connects to the upstairs. But let's maybe go through the front. So as we saw, we have these two staircases. And as we go up, we get to the actual wedding venue. And before we go in, we can check that outside we have some tables and this I imagine would be a cool spot to cut the cake with everyone just outside enjoying the weather. Over here you have some picturesque areas where I imagined you could take some wedding photos. Hopefully they they would come out good. You have a little bar area for the guests to wait at and maybe do a toast. But let's check this venue. So this is where you would get married. By the entrance right to the left, you have this welcome table. So we have some pictures, a book and a lot of plants, a lot of flowers. To the right, we have a lot of gifts. So there's even a painting there, which I imagine could have their names or a picture of them. I mean, the couple getting married. And then this is where you would walk down the aisle, all of the guests here. And this is where you would get married. You have chairs here and also a piano and this gorgeous, gorgeous lighting. Or if you prefer, you can even get married outside. So we have this pathway outside. We have a lot of chairs and another beautiful arch. I thought it would make really cool pictures out here. But yeah, that's it. I imagine also this lake would be cool for, for the couple to take a boat trip and just go around the lake and be very romantic. But yeah, that's it for this build. This really, really big build that took me so long, but I was really happy with it. And hopefully you guys like it too. So this next one is a library and I don't want you to read the spoilers. So let's get into it. This is what it looks like. So I also imagine something more classical and a typical library. Yeah, it's very lush. I 
really like this uh, red color and it has a lot of plants. This isn't the original lot. I don't remember exactly where I built it, but I know it was in Glimmerbrook. Yeah, let's check out the interior. So as soon as we walk in, we have some books on display. Over here, we have this window with some, with some displays as well. We have chairs here already and a lot of bookcases, which makes sense in a library. And you have these rows. So you have plenty of books to choose from. Then we have a door here to the back area. We have some benches as well. Back inside again. To the left of the entrance, we have some more books. And we have a little bathroom here. So it has everything you would need. And then we can go up the stairs to the second floor. And this is where we have some computers and some desks and also some more sitting areas. I really like this nook over here. I think it's really cozy. We have a book on the floor, apparently. And we even have this little peephole to the, the first floor or the downstairs. And then we even have a door to this little balcony. We have the chess tables here and an easel. And I think it would be just a really cool spot to get your skills up. But we're not done. We have, I don't know if you noticed, but we have this little bookshelf here, which is actually a door. And we have this staircase that leads somewhere and maybe we should check it out. The camera goes a little bit crazy when, when you go to the underground levels, but let's try to get this right. So as we get down here, we have already a mouse trap. And through these curtains, we get to the secret club. This spot right here gives me Stranger Things vibes because of the lights. But you have here a lot of cool spots to play play, you have a TV, you have books, you have a lot of things that I think would be just really, really cool to have as a secret club. Maybe they do conspiracies or they solve cases like murder cases and, and things like that. But yeah, I wanted it to have this really cozy, old, rundown feel, but still very eerie and mysterious because we even have a camera here. Maybe they record their sessions. Maybe they do some supernatural things now that we have the paranormal pack. But yeah, I was really happy with this, uh, with this room, all the clutter. I, I really love it. And that's it for our little library slash secret book club. Next up we have the TARDIS from Doctor Who and the description says it's bigger on the inside dot 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 so let's take a look if you're not familiar with Doctor Who this TARDIS is a means of transportation think of it as a spaceship and the thing about it is it is bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside in the Sims we can't exactly do that so I built the inside on the underground, but I'll try to make a cool transition and make it look like we're entering through this door. So let's go in. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So this is where you can go down from the upper floor, but this is what the TARDIS looks like on the inside. I wanted it to resemble the real deal. And the TARDIS has different designs through different seasons. So I didn't try to do just one design, but rather get inspiration and try to capture a feel. So it's very tacky and this is the center of it. So where the doctor pushes buttons and pulls levers and does his thing or her thing no spoiler but her thing as well and since the the TARDIS is kind of this almost a live entity I also I also added this thing over here which is the Strangerville decals and try to make it look more real so I used a lot of like tech objects a lot of science things because it just gives me the Doctor Who vibe and this one is probably more lively than a lot of the TARDISes, but I was really happy with it. And I also used the tool mod to kind of rotate this wall piece to make the roof because we couldn't paint roofs then. But yeah, this is what it looks like. And that's it for our TARDIS build. So next up, we have this half sunken boat and there's no better way to describe it than this. So let's just take a look at it. So think of a Titanic that happened on a lake and this is what you get. It might look odd like this, but maybe it will help if we look from above. It kind of looks like a boat, no? We even have the that there. So the idea was this boat that kind of was sinking, but then got stuck somehow. And through the years, the lake dried out and then someone actually turned it into a house. We have a bike there. And if we go around, we can see a lot of things like this boat that was lost. We have this little 
line for the clothes we have some insects we have a lot of trash i imagine people would throw trash here but we have this little area out here so you can relax at night cook something but yeah let's check out the interior and see what they did with this boat so the door is kind of hidden here but as we walk in to the left we have the living room we have a skylight which would be the front of the boat if that makes sense oh this way yeah this would be the outside of the boat like the front of it it's so mind-boggling but yeah this is the living room we have a lot of references to the sea and the ocean as you can tell and here is the kitchen and dining everything is very run down i imagine the water did some pretty bad damage here but someone managed to turn it into a house and make it livable actually through this archway we have this little corridor thing and through this door we have a little bathroom so it has a shower and also kind of run down but yeah in the hall again if we take this ladder up we get to the bedroom so again very run down it has a computer over there and some decorations some more fishies and yeah just someone who collects thing or rummages for things and kind of turn this into their home and there are no windows here in the bedroom because supposedly these would be windows they're not but they would work as such so just imagine there are some round windows in the bedroom so i remember posting pictures of this build on twitter when i made it and someone pointed out that the boat seems too big for the lake that was there but imagine that the lake was bigger and it just shrunk with time okay it's all about the story guys but yeah, this is it for our boat build or our sunken boat. We even have the name there. So the last build that we will be taking a look at is this giant walking robot. And it's also pretty des descriptive as well. So let's just go into it. Here it is. I think I was inspired by an image I saw on Pinterest. And I'm not sure if I still have the reference. Maybe I do on Twitter. I think I posted it. But this was just so much fun to build. I messed around with the tool mod a lot and just kind of tried to make this real looking robot with a lot of fun colors and a lot of clutter. But yeah, it was really, really fun. And I like doing these types of experimental builds. And this is actually a tiny micro house if you really want. So you can go inside through this door and right here by the entrance we have this little I suppose where you control the robots but it's just a computer and the map right there it's a bit run down on the inside to match the handmade look of the robot so over here we have an actual robot we have the bed over on this side we have a window here and what we could call a kitchen we have a fridge a microwave and we have the stove and sinks sink there and then through this door we go to the back area and we just have a bunch of clutter here this is where the mailbox spawned as well and through this door we have a one by three bathroom hopefully this is usable and then we have a small skylight here and there's no actual way up i didn't include a ladder so you can do that if you want to make this usable you could also just teleport this in there but you would have to teleport them every time but yeah just i really had a lot of fun here and it would be really cool to see a character or a sim for this build so if you want to do that you can tag me on Twitter or you can send it to me via DM on Instagram and I will reply. But yeah, something very different, but still really, really fun. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys like this different type of video and to see the type of things that I built four years ago. Let me know which one was your favorite from all of the ones that we saw. It's hard to choose, but I think the robot might be my favorite just because of how different it is. But yeah, again, all of these builds are on the gallery. My ID is Cats Against Crime. And if you have any ideas for me or challenge ideas, let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.